In 1893, Czech composer Antonin Dvorak traveled to the tiny Czech settlement of Spillville in northeast Iowa to spend the summer. He soon became quite fond of the land and the people, both greatly influencing the man and his writing. A few miles away and nearly 100 years later, in 1992, a group of young musicians paralleled Dvorak's experience. The Ying Quartet spent a year in the small farming community of Jessup, Iowa, living, teaching, learning. Recently, the Ying Quartet returned to Iowa for a unique and singular reunion at St. Wenceslas Church in Spillville, where Dvorak played the organ over 100 years earlier. Here, the quartet paid tribute to the spirit of their kindred composer and to their new friends in Iowa. <laughs> You know, coming to Iowa, um, I don't. Th I don't think Dvorak was coming to educate. Dvorak was coming for a vacation. Um, but I think one thing that he did find here in Iowa was very hospitable people and um, a wonderful experience. He, I think he really enjoyed his time in Iowa, um, and I think you can hear that in the quartet as well. He wrote it very quickly. He was um, more productive, I guess, than usual. Um, and it's a very sunny and optimistic and beautiful piece. I think that reflects his experience here. We do know that Dvorak wrote that piece when he was living in a very small town in rural Iowa, Spillville. And we know that he loved taking wa long walks in the early morning and listening to the birds. And so I think that piece does have special meaning for us, especially when we play it for people here in rural Iowa, that whatever experiences they have that are provoked in their minds as they listen to the music, are legitimate and it gives us an extra way to communicate and to connect with that music. In a certain sense, music is for the ear and not for the eye. And yet, as with any aesthetic experience, it ought to grow within you. If I see a great painting, I should not only know that it's beautiful or whatever, but somehow it should come down in here. It should make me feel certain things. It should make me think certain things, perhaps even smell or hear something. I see the landscape in the first movement, the, the farmland, 
of Iowa. And um, not only the physical landscape, but I think the, the majesty of the plains and the power of the land, the fertility of the land, and um, the potential of the land. I hear all of those things. I, I hear the lifestyle, too, of Iowa, or what it perhaps might have been, the, particularly in the faster movements, the vigor, the energy, the, I mean, the put your hand to the plow sort of feeling. Um, these little, uh, sometimes the songs, the, the slower tunes that, are, that you hear, like the second theme in the first movement, sort of like a, something you might be humming to yourself as you were working, you know. And Dvorak, in fact, was very influenced by the African-American spiritual. He, he found that music very special. I think one of the most potent images um, throughout the quartet is trying to reflect the spirit of the people in, and the spirit of community. I mean, it's, it's the landscape. It's all the fields and the trees and the barns and people working in the fields. It's that. But it's also, it's also the people, the way the people work here. I think that's sort of why Dvorak had such a good time here, is because the people lived life well. I think they worked hard, but I think it was also probably very satisfying, too. Um, and there's, so, there's a lot of feeling in this piece. And the feeling comes from people as much as it does from just wide open spaces. And of course our experience with the piece is very much centered on people too, and people here. There are some sad moments in the piece. It's not all optimism. Some of it is very reflective and very, it's melancholy in a way, you know? So, I mean, but that's all a 
it's all a part, part of, of human experience. Yeah, it's part of the human experience. We came here uh, to Jessup right after we had finished school. And um, it's been amazing to see how much music has been able to really affect people's lives. Because in a way, I mean, I can see how people could think that arts are a separate part. And, and maybe I even thought that while I was in school. And then to come here and to be able to play and to, to make friends and build relationships through the art, um, that's been really um, a very happy result for ourselves, I think and um, one which certainly encourages us to do more of that kind of thing in the future. Thank you. 
I think another factor which um, helped us to get through to the people here was that we were members of the community and we became their friends outside of being musicians and being artists. And they, they came to learn to trust us as people and once they were able to trust us as people and as friends and as neighbors, then they were able to trust us as artists, as musicians. And so it was all of the interaction and conversations and interacting with them outside of a concert, at the grocery store, going over to someone's house for dinner, having them over to our house for dinner, whatever it might be, they got to know us as people. I heard some of them say that they weren't sure what classical music musicians were like before we came. You know, I don't know if they expect us to have... I don't know if they have a fair idea now. <laughs> I hope that the, the quartet, in what it stands for, becomes a catalyst. If listening to the Dvorak American Quartet in the way that it symbolizes our experience here and our interaction with the people and how they've changed us and how we've changed them, um, if all of that acts as a catalyst to open our eyes to the wonderful diversity of each day, of every moment, maybe that's really the power of great art. to express ourselves. This is something that's possible, and this is something that's important, and this is something that can draw the community together.
time will give a very unique perspective on the sort of things that have happened here. Um, I hope, I hope that 10 years from now we can look back and say that was very special. One of our favorite things about playing here in Jessup and around Iowa is I would say that the diversity of our audiences in terms of age, in terms of occupation, um, just in terms of demographics, our audiences here are far more diverse than those that we encounter in most metropolitan areas. And we are just, we're thrilled by that. Again, that's sort of the way the art should be. It shouldn't be limited to a certain age or sector of people. And so that's very exciting. And in a way, I think it's more striking to someone like you who hasn't been around here. We're sort of used to that around here now. And um, actually now when we go to play in other concerts and we, if we notice that everyone's sort of like 50 years and older, we're like, boy, where, where, where are the kids? Where are the young people? And so it, it's sort of our dream that audiences everywhere could be more like they are here in that respect. I think it's important this human human to human element of it. I think that's what attracts people not only here in Jessup but in New York City. And that's what art's all about. So if it's not happening at Carnegie Hall, then that concert is not worth having, in my opinion. Um, and playing in a living room for someone where you're really interacting with them, well, then that would be, at least to me, more gratifying. This is a revolutionary idea, actually, um, that the arts are not something only for a big city, or only for a large metropolitan area, but that arts should be part of communities everywhere, all across the country. I think as a result of the residency, we probably learned as much as we taught people. Um, at music schools, they don't generally teach you how to talk about music, for instance. Um, they teach you plenty about how to play it, um, we learn all about the history of it, we learn about the theory, how it's put together, but we don't have any real life experience in taking it to a school or taking it to um, even adults in the community who may not have had that much experience with classical music. And also I think we're excited about the possibility of being extremely creative with our music, of not just presenting our string quartets in a concert hall in the evening with everyone dressed nicely, but that we would have the opportunity to take our music into uh, circumstances which would really test us, which would really um, stretch us to and force us to relate our music to a new situation and to a new type of people. Mm -hmm. 